When the official recommended and minimum specs for Alan Wake 2 dropped, we heard the collective sound of millions of PC builders crying out in terror as their hopes and dreams of playing the much anticipated sequel vanished into thin air. But since the release, there has only been silence. And I'm not sure which is scarier. With more modern titles demanding heftier hardware, are we living a waking nightmare for our freshly built PCs? Okay, we don't have to be so dramatic, but we do have to put these recommended specs to the test so that you can see what kind of performance you might experience with Alan Wake 2. Now, a few things to point out here before we dive in. Thing one, we used CPUs comparable or on point with the recommended CPUs. For the minimum spec build, we stuck with AMD on this one because it is nearly impossible to find a seventh gen Intel CPU, unless you have like a dozen half-eaten cronuts, a winning lottery ticket from like the early 1990s, or a shady friend named Rusty. I don't have a shady friend named Rusty. Even after we had all of those things, we ended up using a Ryzen 5 1600 instead, since the recommended CPU for the rest of the specs was the Ryzen 7 3700X. This allowed us to use the same RAM, same storage, and motherboard across all our tests. Consistency is a beautiful thing, and it allowed us to get this video out in a timely manner. Thing two, when we started our testing, we had a slightly different recommended spec than those floating around on the internet. We'll call that out during our test when we're using something that's not quite recommended. Thing three, Alan Wake 2 does not have a built-in benchmark utility. That makes us sad. So we loaded the same save with a decent mix of combat exploration, and we ran this loop three times per GPU and averaged the results. So your mileage may vary depending on what's going on in the game, but we did our best to give you a good idea of what you may actually experience. All right, there are a lot of numbers we're gonna be flying through, so let's get started. For the bare minimum specs, the bare naked truth, we use the Ryzen 5 1600 with NVIDIA's RTX 2060 Super and AMD's RX 6000 non-XT. On low settings at 1080p and without upscaling, the RTX 2060 ran at 48.9 FPS, while the RX 6600 ran at 44.9. This is fantastic, considering that this min spec is only supposed to run at 30 frames per second with super sampling, and we did it raw. With DLSS turned to quality, meaning we're using super sampling now, the RTX 2060 Super jumped up to 57.9 FPS, with the RX 6600 jumping up to 61.3 with FSR enabled at quality settings as well. A quick note here, the min spec called for a non-super RTX 2060. R2060 was on vacation on an island with a hard to pronounce name, and it kept sending our calls to voicemail, so dial these numbers back by around 10% and you'll get a fair representation of an RTX 2060. Moving on to the medium specs, the recommended hardware for 1440p at 30 FPS was a Ryzen 7 3700X, which we'll be using from here on out, paired with an NVIDIA RTX 3060 or an AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT. Without upscaling, the RTX 3060 averaged 35.6 FPS, while the RX 6600 XT averaged 31.9 FPS. With DLSS and FSR set to balance, the RTX 3060 jumped up to a devilishly eerie 66.6 .6 FPS, with the RX 6600 XT ever so slightly behind at 62.3 FPS. Again, the spec was supposed to give us 30 FPS with super sampling, so again, we are way above where we were supposed to actually be. What about 1080p 60, even though we've already hit it? What kind of hardware does Alan Wake 2 require besides the stuff we already tested? Well, allegedly an RTX 3070 or an RX 6600 XT. Wait, did I read that right? We literally just tested that one. Well, let's just do what we're told and test it again. <laughs> okay. Now, while this may have been a typo, the RX 6600 XT fell short of the 60 FPS mark without FSR, while the RTX 3070 showed up the recommended specs by averaging 76.2 FPS without DLSS. Again, 
What? With FSR and DLSS set to performance, the RX 6600 XT averaged 87.8 FPS, with the RTX 3070 hitting to stride at 93.8 FPS. So even if the recommended Radeon GPU was the RX 6700 XT, the 6600 XT still put up a good showing for Team Red, even though it wasn't raw, but it wasn't supposed to be. So. I don't know what, Alan, what is Alan Wake doing right now? Now, what about high settings in 4K? Well, here's where we jump GPU generations. For 4K 60 at high settings, the recommended GPU for Alan Wake 2 was the RTX 4070 and the 7800 XT with DLSS and FSR set to performance. Without upscaling, the RTX 4070 averaged 38.8 FPS, while the 7800 XT took the lead with an average of 34.5 frames per second. Adding super sampling only helped the RX 7800 XT's performance lead with an average of 70.4 FPS. The RTX 4070 wasn't too far behind at 62.2 FPS, but enough to notice the distance between the two. I mean, 10 frames, that's, that's noticeable. Now, just a quick recap here of what we've seen, what craziness is happening right now over at Allen Wake, where we just make up specs. <laughs> In just about every case, the recommended spec not only hit their targeted performance marks, but they also exceeded them. In some cases, by a significant margin too. It's crazy. Wait, what's, what's that I hear, you ask? What's that call from the far distance? Roby, you didn't trace any rays. Give more rays now. Okay, okay, let's talk about the ray tracing. The absolute minimum spec recommended for 1080p at 30 FPS with medium graphics and ray tracing set to low was an RTX 3070 or an RX 6800 XT. So how did they do? Well really well actually surprise without any help from dlss or fsr the rtx 3070 traced those little rays at 45.7 fps and the rx 6800 xt handled its own luminous goodness at 50.2 fps with a hefty helping of that super sampling sweet baby ray tracing set to quality the rtx 3070 averaged 66 fps on the nose while the 6800 xt averaged 68.2 now for medium ray tracing at 1080p with path tracing enabled remedy only had one gpu they recommended here the rtx 4070 it's a little unfortunate we don't have a recommended Radeon, but it's because it's path tracing. So in our test, the 4070 averaged 54.1 FPS without DLSS, pretty close to 60 FPS. But with DLSS set to quality, the RTX 4070 blazed past that mark, providing an average frame rate of 75.2 FPS. Again, well above 60 FPS. And finally, what does it take to run Alan Wake 2 wide open with no settings held back? all of the rays and paths being traced, settings on high and at 4K. Well, the recommended spec we had set an RTX 4070, which we're pretty sure this was supposed to be a 4080, but I don't think Alan Wake 2 cares at this point. Here's the deal, a 4070 wheezed at us at 14.9 frames per second without DLSS. So we knew at this point in time, because it's not like Alan Wake 2 cared, we needed to call in the big boys. We called in the RX 7900 XTX and the RTX 4090. And we wanted to see just how well these flagships would do. Yeah, so remember that whole thing about Radeon and path tracing? Well, it tried its hardest to push towards those 60 FPS mark with FSR set to performance, but it fell short at 38.9 FPS. Arguably, that is playable, but it's not the GPU's optimal playground. Here's the deal, guys. Turn off path tracing. This is gonna be a whole lot better, but hey, we are in the world of telling us to do what Alan Wake says to do. As for the RTX 4090, hey, it's caffeinated, it's moisturized, and it's unbothered by what Alan Wake 2 has asked from it as it averaged 78.1 FPS at 4K with DLSS set to performance, path tracing on, and ray tracing set to high. So, where does that leave us? In the middle of nowhere with no real guidance. What did we learn from all this outside of don't let Alan Wake 2 choose min specs for other games? But there are a few things actually. Alan Wake 2 places a heavy emphasis on lighting, shadows, and layered scenes. So when it comes to rendering, it's far more of a graphic heavy title than absolutely anything. The other thing we learned is that the minimum specs are really good at not only hitting, but also exceeding their marks. We can't really comment officially or don't wanna be authoritative, 
on why older hardware was actually shunned here, though we do have some ideas. What we do know is that the specs that were recommended not only worked, but they worked very well at the proposed settings. Almost too good, like they didn't matter. And that, in the end though, is actually pretty great news. Keep in mind, too, that the data we recorded is without NVIDIA's frame generation or AMD's currently in beta fluid motion frames enabled. There may actually be better performance than what we were able to show in this actual video. So at the end of the day, if you had some of this hardware and you were worried about whether performance in LWEEK 2 was gonna be a thing, the situation may not be as dire as you initially thought. This is what we discovered by checking out the minimum specs required for Allen Week 2, but we want to know what you think in the comments down below. Were you surprised by Remedy's choices for recommended hardware? Are you even more surprised that they don't seem to matter and everything seems to be better? While you're down there, you know what? Go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here at Robitech. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.